Well, good evening everybody. Jay Kladek here. And I have something very, very special for you for this video. But before I can show that, let's talk a little bit about a subject which is near and dear to my heart, which is the Eagle Transporter from Space 1999. Now, for those of you that are probably too young to remember, um, Space 1999 was a television show produced by Jerry and Sylvia Anderson over in England. Uh, starred Martin Landau and Barbara Bain as Commander Koenig and Dr. Helena Russell. The show was, the premise of the show was that in 1999 there was a base established on the moon uh, serviced by this fleet of Eagle transporters and a mishap occurs which causes the nuclear waste stored on the moon to explode and become essentially a gigantic rocket motor to rip the moon out of Earth orbit and do a crap load of damage to the Earth in the process. Uh, but in the, over the course of uh, two seasons, uh, basically the crew of Moon Base Alpha and their fleet of eagles usually encounter aliens and all sorts of interesting phenomena out in deep space. A lot of people say that the science of the show, of the of the television show was rubbish and it's like Maybe so, but there are certain movies and television shows that have come out lately where I would say the science probably equally is probably equally as rubbish, if not more so. Uh, so all things considered, Space 1999 is still fun entertainment. If you can, pick up, watch some of the episodes uh, digitally or pick up the DVDs or the Blu-rays. It's a fun show. Um, Airfix and MPC here labeled as Fun Dimensions, partnered up back when the, uh, when the show came out to actually do a series of licensed model kits. They did four of them, technically more like three and a half. Uh, the first one, of course, was the Eagle Transporter. This kit measures about 12 inches long. Uh, the second kit which was uh, pretty popular was the uh, the Hawk fighter spacecraft which was from the episode War Games. Then they also did Moon Base Alpha and then the fourth kit that was done was a car called the Alien which was a heavily heavily retooled version of uh, George Barris's Moonscope uh, custom rod from the 1960s. And a lot of Space 1999 purists consider the Alien to not really be an official kit. MPC was the only one that did that one. At the same time, too, though, MPC was also the only company to do the Moon Base Alpha, whereas the Eagle Transporter was issued by both Airfix and MPC, and the Hawk tra and same thing with the uh, with the Hawk Fighter. Uh, what you see in front of you is three examples of uh, kits that were done. Airfix kit series two. This is the this is as far as I know a first issue Fun Dimensions kit with the original box art. Martin Lando and uh, Barbara Bain on the box uh, as Commander Koenig and Dr. Helena Russell. And in fact, this built kit that you see right in front of you uh, was built from that uh, particular issue right there. A couple years ago. Um, Thanks to popular vote and getting badgered by model builders such as myself, uh, Round 2, MPC, uh, who owns the MPC brand, decided to reissue the Eagle uh, Transporter kit in kind of like a retro vintage boxing uh, with Nick Tate's photo on the box. He played Captain Alan Carter. Some of these kits actually do have a card in there with uh, signed by... Nick Tate. I got like about four of them and I never did find the card. Would have been nice because um, I do. I did like Nick Tate as an actor. I did like the character of Alan Carter even though he crashed an eagle every other episode. Probably the worst pilot in the Space Corps. But hey, he always kept coming back. Anyway, uh, the kits were popular and there's also another issue that, uh, Air, uh, that AMT did back in 1999. Uh, the kids were pretty popular. I remember them from uh, when I was a kid, although I didn't actually build one of these until, funny enough, 1999. 
Uh, I, I picked up this kit for only about 25 bucks back in 1987, I believe it was, at a, at a swap meet. And I decided, well, it's coming up on 1999, might as well build it. Model is not too bad, although anybody that has is a fan of the Eagle who has built this model knows that it's got a few shortcomings and simplifications. Uh, the Eagle Transport is a pretty complicated shape on the show these cage structures here were hollow and you could see structures from the passageway underneath um, the landing gear was a little bit more complicated with like a spring load mechanism um, the MPC kit was good for its day uh, but it really takes a lot of work to bring one of these up to snuff that being said it, do, it can be built looking pretty nice out of the box Except for the decals that were something I custom printed at the time, this kit was done essentially out of the box. And, I mean, give it a good weathering job and a good paint job and you've got a good looking model. I also added the challenge of uh, putting the red striping on the passenger pod to make it a rescue eagle. But uh, for fans of the show, we were hoping, okay, is there anything better out there? Well... That's what I'm coming to next. What you are about to see is something that of which only myself and maybe a tiny handful of other modelers possess, but you will see it in store shortly and you'll be able to enjoy all the eagle goodiness you could ever ever want. Okay, well, so you see a plain brown box. <clears throat> Let's open the box and find out what's in. This arrived on my doorstep two days ago and no this is not the first unboxing. I just thought it'd be a little more dramatic that way. Bubble wrap. Familiar shapes. What is this? This is a test shot for a 22 inch long, well, just a hair under 22 inches long, all new model kit of the Eagle Transporter from Round 2 Models just got this on Monday and I'm filming this on Wednesday so I've only had this in my possession two days. How did I get it you ask? Well back at the end of August I took a trip to Hanover New Jersey for a model show called Jersey Fest primarily a fig uh, figure show. Took uh, some models with me including that uh, Fine Molds 172 scale Millennium Falcon that I built at the end of the contest, I was pleasantly surprised that my model took best vehicle first place. And as the prize for this, I was awarded an example of the test shot for the 22-inch Eagle Transporter. They did not physically have the kit there at the time, mainly because there was a little bit of delay in uh, round two getting it. Uh, round two finally got their first test shots for this kit last week. And after they got done with what they needed to do, they packed it up in a box and shipped it to me. Well, so you might be asking yourself, those that are new to uh, the plastic copy, what is a test shot? Well, if it was a perfect world, theoretically a company could uh, take CAD files or whatever, or do what they have to do and make... Uh, have the molds cut and then you'd have a perfect kit come out of the box, right? Well, not exactly. There's a lot of preparation work that has to be done before a kit is ready to be released to the general public. Now, computers, CAD files and stuff have streamlined the process. Uh, in fact, in the case of uh, Round 2, they did have actually 
a 3D printed uh, set of parts for an Eagle transporter, which they took to uh, which, which they took to many of the trade shows and also the Wonderfest show back in May. But uh, producing the parts, even production of the parts, is still not 100% a slam dunk. There are still some some things that have to be taken care of. Uh, first off, they have to find out if the parts fit. Secondly, they also have to make sure that the uh, plastic injects into the uh, into the sprue channels right. Um, in years past, a company might go through maybe one, two, or even three test shots before they're ready to release a model kit to the general public. Um, this is a first-run test shot, meaning these parts that you see here are fresh out of the molds from China. I don't know how long it took for them to uh, ship from China over to uh, Round 2 South Bend offices, but as a result, they're, they're uh, one of the designers there, Jamie Hood, is doing a build at this moment to uh, help finalize the instructions. Um, a gentleman by the name of James Small up in Canada is also building one, I think even possibly two of them, which are going to go around to the trade shows as the built example and also end up on the box art. Um, so I'm kind of one of the very few civilians or people totally outside the production chain to get a hold of one of these, thanks to the arrangements that the Jersey Fest made to get one promised to them by round two, and also thanks to my skills at building models to win that contest. But, that being said, although there is still a little bit of work that has to be done to this kit, things are looking very, very good. Um, pretty much when a kid gets to the test shot stage, 90%, well, maybe 85 to 90% of the work has been done on that kit. Uh, so there's still a few other things that have to be done after that. Uh, there's also parallel work being done on decals and and the box art, of course, until it all finally comes together and we see the production kits. Now, round two was promised that, well, I wouldn't say promised. They have said that they are shooting to have this released by middle part to the end of November. Remains to be seen whether we hit that date. Um, I used to work in the hobby industry, and the first thing I would tell people when they say, oh, this company promised this, I tell them, no, they didn't necessarily promise that. It will be done when it gets done. I would rather the model be done properly rather than it be rushed to the market. Because uh, you want to make sure that, the company wants to make sure that this thing builds just as good as it looks. And they also want to make sure that there's not any other little snafus or anything. Because, well, if anybody goes totally crazy on the review saying, oh, this wrong, this is wrong, and all that, it, no company ever wants to see that. I mean, but at the same time, too, it's always a compromise between detailing of the model, the amount of work that's gone into the kit, and also the amount of money invested. I mean, if a company had unlimited resources, they could bang out the perfect kit every time. Well, maybe not. But at the same time, too, it's also a rush to try to get the, uh, the kit done at a price point where people can afford it. Price on this kit is probably going to retail at full retail MSRP, for about 130 bucks. But that being said, there are uh, hobby shops when they get it, online vendors when they get it. You're probably going to see prices closer to 100 bucks, depending on, and also then you got shipping to factor in. Now, the reason the measured size of this model when done, let's compare these command modules. It's roughly about double the size of uh, this kit right here. This particular kit, when done, measures a little under 22 inches long. And that is exactly one half the size of the big studio models built for the show, which were about 44 inches long. Um, Brian Johnson's effects team and the builders, they built the Big Eagles at 44 inches, 
because they got good depth of field on the imagery when they when they shot the footage. Uh, 22 inch Eagle models were also built mainly because there were a lot of components they could get at half size. And then in addition to that they also did some small 11, 12 inch Eagles for very 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 long distance shots. Not much detail at all. In fact an Airfix kit probably has more detail on it than what they had on those little tiny ones. But uh, this particular kit right here it is the same scale as the roughly 22 inch long studio models but it's got details in there that are equivalent to what the um, 44 inch model had. So looking at the parts don't know how well you can see it. These are uh, a couple of the um, passenger pod corridor sections. <laughs> Let's see the infamous to me uh, uh, 135th scale Panther tank deck there, molded in half size. Looks like uh, exhaust set up for another tank. Not sure which one. All these parts have been, all all these little details have been checked by uh, Eagle builders for decades with the resin kits and the custom builds. And detail on this one near as we can tell is spot on. Okay, I've uh, pulled some more of the parts out of the box. Some of uh, what can be recognized, this is the... Right here is part of the cage structure that goes on the bottom of the passenger pod. Hopefully you can kind of see that down here. This is the back of the command module. Definitely a nice change from the, uh, the smaller one. <laughs> Very well done. The kit also does have a rather crisply molded uh, back wall. I'll flash up a still image of what this part looks like. And two pilot figures. I'll flash some better images of the, uh, the pilot figures up as well. Now the 44 inch long Eagle models were judged to be roughly about 124th scale. And what they use for the pilot figures in those are 124 uh, scale Gemini astronauts out of the old uh, Ravel Gemini spacecraft kit which was very plentiful back in the early 70s. Well, the clever thing about round two is they actually had went ahead and molded the pilot figures in exactly half scale using all the Gemini details. The only thing that's different is these guys have like a little square chest pack on them. In fact I'm thinking uh, for a future build I might scrounge the Ravel pilots, <laughs> the, uh, the the Eagle pilots out of there and maybe put them in a 48 scale Ravel Gemini and see if anybody notices the difference in pilot figures from what the 48 scale kit has. This part's free right here. Contains part of the landing gear structure, the foot pad, pad for the passenger module, part of the cage structure, and the main uh, and the main support for the landing gear assembly, plus part of the uh, the scissoring oleo strut. The production kit will have actual springs that will help the gear to drop and droop when the uh, when the model gets picked up just like the big studio models. This is part of the, uh, one of the landing pads right here. I'm not pulling out every parts tree to uh, show you tonight mainly because well a lot of the parts are duplicated but as you can see they put a lot of work into this. Yes I know you see flash don't panic this is a pre-production sample the molds still have to be worked on a little bit to make sure everything's up to snuff. When the when the kits get released, they shouldn't have any flash or they should have very little, if any. Um, as a result, I'm going to have to do a little bit more prep work on the uh, clear parts when I build mine. Reason being, don't know how well you can see it. Reason being is the uh, finish on these clear parts is 
kind of pebbly. The reason why they do this is to um, make sure that they get the general shape of the parts and then when the kits first get assembled to determine that everything fits properly then uh, when they prepare the molding for production kits they'll polish these up to a uh, fine luster so you won't have this uh, pebbly texture like I have to deal with. In my case I'll just have to put a few passes of uh, some ultra fine polishing cloth on these to get them up to a nice luster. As a result this kit will have open cockpit, win uh, clear cockpit windows for the top. You can even do them for the bottom as well. Although usually the ones on the bottom were painted black. You can even light the model if you so desire. Another thing I'll point out is there is going to be an aftermarket set from round two featuring one piece molded aluminum in, uh, one piece lathe aluminum engine bells. Um, those are going to cost a pretty penny, probably about 90 bucks. Will I use them for this build? Probably not. I'm going to build this one out of the box, see if I can use some uh, alclad shades to try to get that nice metal look without having to go with aluminum, or aluminium as the Brits like to call it. But uh, a future Eagle build, I might be utilizing the aluminum engine bells just because they, they do look pretty nice and give the model a nice amount of heft. But uh, from what I see, everything looks pretty good so far. So you can see uh, some more of the parts. This is one half of the passenger pod. Um, three pieces per side. This would be the uh, sidewall structure. This is the structure with the upper windows. Actually, they were kind of more of a skylight in the TV show. And then you got the edge here. Um, wraps around to the top. This right here is one of the end pieces on the pod. Uh, it's got some nice door detail. There's also some door detail on the uh, part that goes in the corridor, either both in front of the pod or behind the pod. This is part of the cage structure for the uh, for the two modules or that the two sections between the command module and the pod and then both the uh, pod on the back side and the um, in engine assembly this right here are the uh, side walls for the landing gear pods There is uh, like a molded in cross pattern for the uh, for the reaction control system exhaust, so those just have to be painted black to look to look the part. Or the decal sheet might have all, have those printed in black already. I don't know for sure. T the test shot, since the decals are still being designed and being worked on, I did not have access to those. But I've got some ones coming for a designed for use on a resin kit that should work just fine on this one and I don't know maybe I can get my hands on some production decals when it gets closer to uh, the issue date okay and I'll leave you with a shot of uh, part of the spine structure I mean heck the <laughs> diameter of the tubing on this compared to the 11 incher showed just how thick it was on the 11 incher when done, this model should be very, very sturdy. I mean, maybe not sturdy enough to actually step on like uh, Brian Johnson was rumored to do with the 44-inch Eagles from time to time to des test just how structurally sound they were. But this model is, is designed and built like a tank, and it should do the part quite nicely. Well, in case you're wondering... Yes, I am going to build this. Uh, there are people out there that I know that collect test shots, and I've had several people that when I showed the still images of it, they said, no, no, don't build it, just cherish it, wait for the production kit to come out. Eh, well, the big thing about a test shot is they're really only valuable to people that know what they are. I mean, and I'm not willing to keep this one in storage for 20 years <laughs> until, I'm an, until I'm an old man and... Uh, 
offer it for sale. Plus also round two and their nice little note said please do not sell this because this is not a production sample. This is a pre-production sample. I have been given the privilege of having one sent to me as my contest price for Jersey Fest and I'm going to honor that agreement and I'm going to build this model. Uh, so hopefully this will only take a few weeks at most to uh, get it done. When done I will have something that will look absolutely incredible and hopefully it will provide some inspiration for you guys to build yours. Just be aware when I'm building this if I come across any problems or anything those problems may or may not be in the production samples. Uh, round two is endeavoring to try to fix as many of the issues as possible before this kit gets to market, but I will say, I will say this, um, talking to my buddy uh, Jim Small, who is building one for box art model right now, he says this, this thing builds a lot easier than any of the resin eagles that he's ever done, the 22 and 23 inch long ones, such as what Comet used to do and such as what uh, Replicas Unlimited has been doing until just recently. He says this thing, even with the fact that it's a pre-production model, builds a lot cleaner and it's a lot more fun build. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed this exclusive look at the uh, pre-production shot for the 22 inch Eagle. Stay tuned. Videos will be coming up soon detailing my build of it. Um, there are other projects in the works. No, this is not the big thing that I was hinting at that's coming down the line. I will tell you what that is uh, sometime in mid-October when I've got all the work done on it. In the meantime, keep enjoying your building. Buy lot uh, Pre-order and buy lots of Eagle models because if round two gets a lot of orders for this, hopefully they will do more stuff. Laboratory module, spine booster, it'd be nice to see. Sky's the limit as to what can be done. And this kit is definitely an Eagle kit for the 21st century. Anyway, that's what I've got, and thank you for watching.